This episode of the This Is Reportage podcast is sponsored by DreamBooks Pro. Choosing an album supplier is a super important thing as we need so many elements. The wow factor, extremely high quality printing and production, a quick and consistent turnaround time, intuitive software to help us design and friendly support people who get back to us quickly. Yep, we want a lot and DreamBooks Pro deliver on it all. Don't just take my word for it either, as they are the album supplier of choice and raved about by so many world-class photographers, many of whom I've interviewed on this podcast actually, including our current photographers of the year, Jesse and Moira Laplante, previous potties, Eve Sieppers and Fabio Mirulla, Doc Day founders Kevin and Annie Kafash, and Victor Lax, to name just a few. Originally from Portugal, they are present in more than 30 countries worldwide and have 40 years of history. Listeners to our podcast can also get an exclusive 25% discount on an order. Just head to dreambookspro.com forward slash TIR and leave your email on a simple form to get it. I'll also include the link on this episode's page on thisreportage.com. Thanks to Dreambooks Pro for sponsoring this episode. Hi and welcome to episode 133 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Reportage and This Reportage family, and I'm a photographer too. My guest this week is one of Ireland's very best documentary wedding photographers, the fab Shane O'Neill. Winner of six Reportage Awards and two Story Awards, speaker at the inaugural Doc Day, an all-round lovely guy, Shane shares so much on the episode, including how he got into documentary at college and getting his first wedding, getting in the zone when shooting back-to-backs, something we don't talk about too much, group shots and couple time, working with videographers, the story behind one of his specific Reportage Awards, workflow, why images in 16.9 format can be so effective, like in one of his Story Awards, tips for if you're feeling a bit stagnant, speaking at Doc Day and why you should attend the next one, and so much more. Before we get on to Shane, just a few little things from me. Um, The first thing, big exciting news, is that a couple of days ago we announced our This Reportage and This Reportage family Christmas party. Yay! Which is, yeah, really exciting. I always love our Christmas parties. They're always such a fab event. Yeah, love it. Um, If you don't know, if you've never been to one before, that it's a totally free event uh, exclusively for This Reportage and This Reportage family members um, and members can bring along a guest too so and that guest can be whoever you want your friend partner person you're having that secret affair with we don't judge you know all welcome um so yeah bring them along as well and it's uh, it's not a workshop it's not talks or anything it's just an excuse really for us all to get together and let our hair down at the end of another season really and yeah, I mean, I, I love the kind of online community that we have with TIR, but it's, you know, real life meetings are just where it's all at. That's where you form relationships and that's where I just love it. It's just fab meeting people in real life in the flesh. And, you know, we've had part the, at our parties before. People have come from all over the world and, yeah, people have been already been RSVPing. And so, yeah, really exciting. We've got the whole exclusive uh, venue in London, a new venue for us. It's on Monday, the 11th of December, 2023. If you want to come along, as I say, it's free for, for members. All you need to do is you need to RSVP if you want to come along. So, yeah, visit the link in the members area or the latest newsletter or in the private Facebook group. And you must RSVP so we get you on the guest list so you can come along. Second news is that the awards deadline is just a few days away now. And yes, this one does fall on a Saturday. So the deadline is 2359 BST on the 23rd of September. So when this episode comes out, it's just a couple of days away. I'm sorry that it's a Saturday this time. I know that's not ideal for, for wedding photographers, especially who generally shoot on Saturdays. But the way it's just the way the TIR website works is that the awards deadlines are on the same dates every year. So sometimes it falls on a Saturday, rarely, but sometimes it does. This one is a Saturday. So make sure you get those entries in, you know, in good time if you're shooting. It's always good to submit before, you know, days before the deadline anyway. Try not to leave it to the last minute, as I say, lots of times in the newsletter and Facebook group as well. Uh, third little thing from me is that personally, um, I've mentioned before, I'm doing two workshops in October in the UK. My Manchester date has sold out, but there are still a few places left on my Cornwall workshop, which is on October the 11th, 2023. So if you fancy that, head to alanlawphotography.co.uk and you can uh, find details and sign up there. Right, over to Shane. 
Hey Shane, how you doing? Hello, Mr. Law. How are you doing? I'm really good as well, thank you. Yeah, how 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 are you? How's things over with where you are? Good. I mean, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's July, so it's all nice and quiet. You know, not much happening around here. <laughs> and uh, but no, I'm I'm only kidding. It's uh, You're right in the thick of things. Yeah, kind of just it 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 just it, every July, and all of a sudden it's like you know you're perfectly streamlined workflow up until June and you're like I at last I have this cracked getting stuff turned around quickly for clients and everything and then all of a sudden in July and uh, boom and all of a sudden before you know it you have six or seven in the queue but all good I mean it's it's great it's nice to be traveling and going to different places and so it's not really a complaint I guess oh no it's good it's it's good to be busy but I'm yeah I hear you there about the backlog it's never nice to get, have that backlog going up is it do you do many kind of like back-to-backs you know like literally the day after and stuff yeah i i've done uh i'm just in the back of a three in a row which oh. is rare i uh, i wouldn't usually do it one was a reschedule from covid funnily enough so that's probably what uh put that one in there but it, it's funny kind of I, I i find that that there's one hidden benefit to to working um uh, so well, like, so tightly and putting so many together, it's be, it's that you're you're kind of super limbered up, you know. That uh, by the time you get to the third wedding, it's there's a lot of stuff coming very very easily to you, like and your anticipation levels are uh, tend to kind of um, become hypersensitive. So you end up getting really good stuff, I find, you know. That is a good point, actually. Yeah, because it's like like the opposite end of the scale of that is when you've had like a long winter off and you come to photograph your first wedding, you know, in maybe March and April and, and you're really rusty. I guess that's the opposite. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I find even just say for, for like a winter wedding, you might have like three weeks to, to, to plan it in advance in your mind. You're going to go, right, I'm going to do this narrative and I'm going to make it lovely. And and then when it comes to summer, then you just don't even have time to think. You just, you're, mm-hmm. you're here bed the night before, getting an air code to try and uh, make sure that you're going to be at the bride's house on time, you know, like, and, and you're diving in. So you're getting completely different images, but um, definitely not worse, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's all, all interesting. And those three in a row that you've done recently, are they all kind of like long full days? Do you, know, do you shoot like, I know some photographers these days, like the young guys, not me, not me, shoot like right to the end, like 2 a.m. or something. Are you, are you not doing that, are you or are you? No, no, no. I wouldn't do a 2 a.m. or now. But at the same time, I wouldn't have a cutoff point either. Like I wouldn't um, say to someone like if I was staying late, uh, that like it's 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. Sorry, uh, you know, uh, dance now or get the arm out of here. But like I, I wouldn't right. be like that. I just like people to enjoy their day and just the evening happens as it happens and it's normally around about the half ten mark. Um but most of the work I do in uh, is outside Waterford. It's more than an hour away from where I live. Um and most of the weddings I shoot, particularly in summertime, um would be until dancing. Um so but I'd normally stay for about a half an hour dancing and then I just, you know, peel away. Uh, right, yeah. Say wow. the- in advance before we get you know before the dancing starts because it's impossible otherwise you know uh and uh yeah that so, is true actually do you do that yeah that's a good idea i never really do that that's it, a good idea. Top, there we go top tip number one yeah uh, saying goodbye before the, the dancing begins yeah, it's the only way to do it i mean uh and then you can like have uh you know a meaningful critique of the day and you can uh you know like talk about a few different things rather than just kind of high-fiving and running out the door like uh but um yeah it's so, you know it, it, it's you know the music starts it's loud they're in the middle of the dance floor it's just it can be awkward to say goodbye so uh always <laughs> goodbye in advance that is a good tip shay <laughs> you know i've never ever thought of that and you know i've not been shooting as long as you but i've done a lot and like you know 370 weddings i've never thought of doing that before i should do that yeah because it's always like shouting at them like, over the mega loud dance floor it's like bye it's been so great and yeah could yeah. just do it and then it was more... some kind of correspondence you know like as in you know it's not just goodbye and the answer goodbye there uh, did you get this and uh, you know and it's yeah so uh so yeah good. here you go straight yeah. in boom with a great tip there in the first few minutes shane i like that that is very good um, and you mentioned there then uh waterford is that so that's where you're based that's it you're in ireland aren't you i'm so bad with geography i know you're in ireland though but so you're in waterford is that right yeah so waterford is in the southeast um and it's um it's 
a small enough city, about like probably the fifth or sixth biggest city in Ireland. Okay. Um, but uh, most of the work that I do uh, is, is outside Waterford for various different reasons. Um, and reasons which I like as well, I have to say, uh, you know, I, I, I do have a bit of wanderlust in me. And, you know, by going to far off locations, it's the only way really to kind of... Uh, to uh, you know, fulfil that wanderlust, I guess, because mm. you know like the places that you end up, like I mean, with a camera, uh, it still fascinates me. You know, still does. That's uh, cool. So, and you must have some beautiful places in Ireland as well to, to see. Yeah, there's one or two. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the thing. It's like you'd always have your, your major tourist hotspots and so on like that. Like I mean, but it's um, it's the places that you don't expect to be nice and it doesn't even have to be pretty as such but it could be like certain areas the people are just particularly nice there or you know um uh you kind of just see how how other parts of ireland get by and particularly up north of ireland when you're up there i'm always like you know uh, kind of fascinated with the way they do things up there and donegal again it's donegal is i'm up there next week funnily enough and i'm looking forward to it but i'd probably never be there otherwise you know only for uh, I I I, um, I have couples who are willing me to take take me uh, on that way. That is cool. It's one of the best things about what we do, actually, isn't it? And similar for me, even as you know, I shoot loads outside of Cornwall, and it's lovely. To, it, I go to places I, I would never go, like you're saying as well. And yeah, it's a good plus of our job, just seeing other bits of the, of even our own countries. It's cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Cornwall's on the list now, but it ain't easy to get there. Funny enough, but uh, <laughs> it is nice. You did come. It's, it is nice. It's fine. Yeah, I know. I, it's definitely on the list. Although apparently it's a, uh, it's quite popular there now, isn't it? Like it's it's just like yeah, mayhem of tourism. That is true, especially <laughs> or it was yeah in the COVID times as well. And I think that just helped its popularity. Um, yeah, that's true. But you, but you can fly from how far are you from Dublin then? How long does it take you to drive to Dublin? Two hours to the airport. Um, okay, it's, that's the thing. Actually, Waterford is really well connected. Funny enough, even though we're down the southeast. You know, uh, Cork is two hours away, Dublin two hours away, you'd get to Limerick in two hours, Galway three and a half. So basically all the main parts of the country, you could get there pretty quickly. Uh, that's um, cool. So you can fly to Newquay in Cornwall from Dublin direct? Yeah, I'd say if I was going to go to Cornwall, I'd probably end up getting the boat and driving down. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So like, cause, yeah, because by the time you get to Dublin and then... New key and then rent the car and then that's you know? true. So, yeah. So where do you get the boat to? Where where in Cornwall? So well, you don't get to Cornwall. You get it to uh, Ross Laird Fishguard. Uh, What's that? Yeah. So Fishguard is in Wales. Oh right. Oh, it's so quite a fair drive from yeah. Wales though. Still. Exactly. So as you get, I, like I've already done the journey plan for Cornwall, and it's like, yeah, maybe not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a mission, bit of a mission, but it'd be worth it. It'd be nice. Someday. Um, Shane, let's let's go. Let's talk. Let's go back the years. Let's go. Let's talk about how you got into it all. And I read that it was in college where you really got into documentary, where you spent uh, two weeks documenting the bin men of Waterford. Sounds like a bit of a rubbish assignment. Sorry, bad dad. Joke. Hey. <laughs> no, but can you tell us yeah, more about that and how you ended up getting your, your first wedding after that? So... Um, I guess like just if you took it from college because you can make this a really really long story if you want it but from college say I went to a college called Don Leary College of Art and Design which is now IADT it's changed its name but it was almost a, a, a really good um, college and really good course but the course that I did was commercial photography mm-hmm. and um, I always wanted to be uh, a commercial photographer I, I always wanted to kind of go down the route of sort of those high technical, you know, like if you had a glossy magazine, for instance, like, I mean, it could be a perfume bottle or it could be a, a, the inside of a watch or something like that. But that was the route that I wanted to go down. Um, so when I got to Dunleary and I got into it, it was, um, um, I uh, found that there were, because the course itself was so hands-on, like, I mean, like that it's, just take, for instance, the, the another course in DIT um, in, in Dublin was the first six months of it was, was um, all theory. So it was basically all books and um, books only. Whereas in Don Leary, the first thing that they did was they gave you 20 rolls of film. Um, uh, they gave you, uh, you know, um, a lot of printing paper and the best darkroom in Ireland and said, go off and take photos, you know. So cool. uh, it, it used to attract a lot of people who 
didn't want to be commercial photographers, but pretended to be uh, commercial photographers in order to get access to this brilliant equipment. And uh, okay, yeah. So that's what that's where that started. So basically, what happened was um, a lot of those art photographers came along and uh, sort of indirectly exposed me to the work that they were doing. So um, the big one for me would have been at the time would have been Martin Parr. Mm-hmm. Where, um, when I saw this guy's work, I was like. Holy crap, you know, like uh, I, I just couldn't get over how the ordinary everyday life could be uh, elevated in such a way, you know, and, and I identified with so much that I've seen in the images. And for the first time, I thought like, wow, I mean, I, 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 I can be part of this world. I can I can I can show my world and make it look interesting. And uh, so it, it really um, just caused me to change direction on, on where I wanted to go as a photographer. Um, so in second year in college, then we had to do uh, a, a documentary uh, photography. So all, basically there were six or seven different modules and one of the modules was just happened to be documentary photography. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was two weeks we had off college and just choose any topic that you want. Um, uh, um, and I just thought about why not do the bin men? It gave me an opportunity to stay in Waterford. I didn't have to go to Dublin. Um, and uh, I, I just literally got permission, jumped on board with these guys and, and traveled around with them for two weeks. And that was it. Like So that set me off on that trajectory. I, I, I produced images that I love the look of. They were in black and white. And Was it all on film still then? Yeah, all on film, of course. Yeah, this was 1998. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I show my age here as well. <laughs> yeah. So... So basically, then fast forward, say um, uh, about five or six years later, and then uh, a friend of mine was getting married. You know, at this time I wasn't working in photography. I, you know, I, I I had cameras and I never lost it, but I, I always felt I was probably too young to become a professional because back then, you know, you know, you get these really established, like you know, uh, Goliaths, you know, and I just felt that I would never be taken seriously and. Uh, so I just got various different jobs. and uh, But anyway, a friend of mine asked me to photograph his wedding. And I said, I will. I said, but can I do it my way? And that way was I set nothing up. So it was a time now he had another photographer. And the other photographer was a very well-established guy who would do what they've done for generations before that, which was set everything up. And it was what people wanted and it's what photographers did. So it was a perfect uh marriage in that regard um but i just came along this one day and i literally photographed everything i remember there was like um it was a, a rural wedding and the bride's mother was making a big stew at 12 o'clock in the day on a, a hot summer's day and i photographed that uh as a background to the wedding and it just stuck out you know because like it was nobody would ever photograph something like that why would you do that it's a wedding for christ's sake what do you want to photograph a stew on the <laughs> yeah. um but what happened then from that was then uh, when I sent him on the images and he showed somebody and then they showed someone and then the phone started ringing and someone said, look, I saw those pictures and I love them. Can you do it for me? And and uh, and, and pretty much that's where it all kind of came from. Um, and I kind of, about three or four years after that, then I went into a full-time photography. And um, But I always classified myself as a, a documentary photographer, purely because it's, what I like to do as opposed to, you know, the whole setting up thing. So, yeah, I know that's so cool. That's so cool to hear about how it all began for you like that. That is, as you said, like the perfect marriage. So that first wedding, they had that traditional photographer as well as you. That's right, isn't it? That's what you said. Yeah. And it's funny because like, I I mean, a a huge coincidence in my life is that I'm living right now uh, in a house which borders um, a a, a photographer uh, from from Waterford, his name was Joe McGrath, and he was like, like the go-to guy, like particularly in the eighties. And you know, all his setups were on film. Like, I mean, he shot like you know three rolls per wedding and so on and that. Like, but what he actually did was he made his garden into uh, like this the the place where you go to get your photographs taken after the wedding. So oh, right. it's hilarious. Like, I'm, I'm actually I, I'm looking at it right now, like the whole area that he used. So uh, it, it's funny kind of how it evolved. I really like here I am. Uh, Full circle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that is surreal. That's real, man. Um, no, that's so cool, though. It's so cool. And that whole that two week with the bin men. Um, were, were you getting up at like four or five in the morning or something? And were you 
yeah, just following them on the the big like garbage truck and stuff then. Yeah, so like back then it was it well it was getting up at I don't know eight o'clock ish there thereabouts like I mean and uh, yeah uh, back then it was uh, slow to rise I would have been uh, very much a night owl uh, so it was it was tough work and that like um, but it was tough work for them too because it was back before uh, wheelie bins it was sort of that era when oh, they right. physically uh, pick the bins up and throw them in and. People would throw it anything like back then. It, they were known as the ash men. Uh, maybe that's because people used to put their, you know, from burning fires, put the ash into the the bins and then they throw them in. Like, but it was hard, hard work. And I remember even back then, you know, you know, say to myself, Jesus, I, uh, I don't want to do this, you know. <laughs> yeah, gosh. Uh, but it, but they were really, really amazing people. It was great. It was great fun. It was. You know, they, they were all brilliant friends, and and uh, and that's one thing that came across in the images. You know, like that um, the camaraderie, uh, which was brilliant. That's really cool, man. That's cool that you captured something like that. It'd be, it sounds like something that these days, um, you know, the big like kind of foundation workshop that like kind of Fearless um, used to do, and, and now I think Tyler Working owns it. It sounds like the kind of assignment that people would go on on that. You know, that thing I'm talking about. I haven't a clue what you're talking about. Oh no, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's a big like multi-day they call it like a foundation workshop where they um people have like two or three really top mentors and as part of that they go out on assignments and they document something like that and um yeah like and it's yeah. that something that we'd do but it sounds great i mean I, and like there's stuff happening today that will have relevance in 20 30 years time uh it's just that when you're living it in you know everyday life and so on like that like it's it's difficult to see it but um but but yeah like i mean even i still like to to do it i'd actually love to go back and reshoot that project with the same camera and the same gear the same equipment uh, just yeah. for crack. i'm not going to do it <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite a project though that would be pretty cool wouldn't it It'd be so oh, different now to when you captured it back then as well yeah i mean it's uh, uh no I, I i i just couldn't go back to film unfortunately as much as i love it and I have like a heap of film gear here in my office, like. But I, I remember um, about two years ago, I, I tried to shoot a wedding in film, thinking like, yeah, this will be great. And uh, but my God, impossible, absolutely impossible. We're just by with digital. Yeah, I can't imagine, man. I, obviously, I've never, I've never done it, and I just can't imagine. Mega respect to people who do. But it's very trendy these days as well, though. Now you could, you know, add another like five figures to your fee or something. You know, if you could do a film. Yeah, six maybe. Uh, you yeah, <laughs> you need it with the processing costs alone. No, it, it's it's um it's lovely, uh, and and uh, it, I can appreciate a good film photograph, but like I I there's no way I'm digital all the way now, and like that's it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's nice having to play around and a bit of fun every now and again. And a disposable camera is great cracking, but yeah, no, yeah, it's not the whole thing. No, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. So do you remember when you made the point where, even at the point of transition from, you obviously, you spoke that you had like a day job. Do you remember when you went from the day job and it was like, right, I'm going to do weddings full time? Yeah, kind of. I mean, like when I left my day job um, uh, and went at photography full time, um, it was funny because in the lead up to leaving the job, uh, like I found that when I got home, it was a nine to five job. And it was a great job. And uh, what was uh, it? What were you doing? It, it was a trader, believe it or not. That's oh, right. what, the the what it, it was. Um, um, and it was for um, working for uh, like it wasn't like Wall Street trader and that. It was uh, it was a local business that basically sold food um, goods worldwide and you'd buy it at one price and sell it on at a marginally higher price like ah cool okay. is that like but, trading places no not as fun as trading places ah, i love uh, that film though but, don't they it's all about belly pork a part part of that though isn't it isn't it belly pork well oh, yeah actually pork ribs were the big one that huh? was okay uh, <laughs> uh, pork ribs into the north american market was like basically what 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 this business is mainly about and oh, okay but anyway it was uh, it was great and, and I, had a, I had a a really cool boss there who i'm still friends with today and um uh, but what happened was i like when i got home from work say when i was doing that day job I, i'd usually have 
a you know, mixer or something, you know, that I'd have to work on that night or a little personal project at the time. Like, I mean, I had all my digital gear and so on and that. Like, I, I, I photographed as a hobby. And, uh, uh, but people knew me as a photographer. So, I, you know, you'd often get a, a knock on the door and someone asking me for a photograph. And, of course, I'd always find it hard to say no, so I'd end up doing it. So when it did come to, uh, to going into photography full time, I think this was about 2006, not right. quite sure, it could be earlier. But about that time, anyway, um, uh, that I basically hit the ground running, you know. Um, and back then, I I did a bit of everything uh, because I wanted to, and it was nice to do a bit of commercial and a bit of press stuff and a bit of whatever really came your way, you know. Like uh, so, it, it was easy in, in that regard. Uh, the press work was interesting, but I used to hate the way that you had to caption every photograph you took had to be bloody captioned, and it was yeah, just, right. oh god, it was painful. Um so yeah, so so that's kind of how I started and that's how I went into it. But um yeah, the wedding work, even though I did some cringy shit with weddings, I mean <laughs> like what? What do you mean? <laughs> like what? Like, oh, what? like now I, I will say in my defense, I mean I still I was largely documentary. <laughs> but you know, back then, like you're just you're not sure if the clients are going to fully, fully get this documentary thing. So you end up doing mm-hmm. a few images that you think they might like, you know. And uh, oh yeah, like heart shaped, heart shaped like, groups. Yeah, to look at his fucking watch outside the church, and you know, like this kind of bullshit. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But anyway, luckily, <laughs> I, I I copped on quickly enough, and and I I, uh, I parked all that stuff. No, that's cool. Cool. That's <laughs> cool. And and the, your work is so good. It's so good. And I wanted to talk about specifically one of your specific reportage awards, actually. Um, I, I love, and it's the one, you're going to know it, the one with the waitress, like, spilling champagne everywhere. You yeah, know, that one, one with, yeah. Yeah, with the guests, like, dramatically moving out the way to escape getting wet. It's such a fab capture. Can you tell us more about that shot? Do you remember capturing it? Yeah, no, I do. I remember um, it, it was at a, a wedding in... in a, Powers Court up in Wicklow, and uh, it, it was uh, it was a lovely wedding. It was uh, an American Irish wedding, um, but most of the guests were over from America. And at that moment, what was happening was um, to the left of that scene where were family photographs happening, okay. um, and it was happening in the middle of the drinks reception, which is carnage to do. But anyway, it was uh, uh, it was happening, and. Um, so I was just keeping an eye on things to my right, and I could see that this waitress who was, uh, she was absolutely smashing. I think she was French, but she was nervous. I think it was her first day in the job, or she wasn't that long, definitely, anyway. And um, so she had the tray in her hand. I remember someone reached over to take one of the one of the flutes. But whatever happened, anyway, she uh, tipped it slightly, and the poor waitress could see what was happening. So even though it was, it looks like it was a, a, a almost like a lucky capture. It just kind of happened. It took about two seconds to happen. So I swung the camera around and I just, uh, you know, hit the shutter just as, as it all unfolded. And it turned out to be a great capture. It was the, the woman to her right uh, was kind of the overreaction really, really made it, you know, it was kind of like as if it was, it is that reaction that it really makes it, isn't it? Yeah, because you do see, you know, there quite a lot of glasses falling over, but it's to get a reaction like that in the same shot. And they framed it to get, yeah, the whole movement of the glasses and the reaction in the same shot. It's such a great image, man. It's so cool. Yeah. And it's so fab that you had that awareness whilst you were doing the group photo. So even more respect for that, you know, because for me, myself, when I'm doing the group shots, you know, I don't think I am paying enough attention to the other stuff that's around me i'm just thinking really of the groups and i I should be more aware of what's going on yeah i mean it it depends really i guess like that uh, you know i i feel in a lot of ways like that that the photography part of it is second nature to me uh like that i can intuitively capture as i go like i mean i i shoot on cameras that i i don't like I often don't look through the, the viewfinder mm. uh, I can kind of shoot from the hip because I know that 28 mil is going to capture a bit of that side of it a bit. But I find like that, say, for instance, with family photographs, that's a really, really good time to get those kind of images, like something, anything happening that looks like it's spontaneous um, in between those photographs. Like uh, it, it's fair game for me. And I, I usually kind of just dive in on it. But yeah. Yeah, family photographs, uh, they happen. They always happen and uh they can take up a chunk of time so it's it's worthwhile trying to grab something in between 
yeah it makes total sense and i oh, i should do that more and like, yeah i really should i'm always like i just want to get these groups done quite quickly and then i can focus more on the other moments but i should be thinking like, i can be getting moments during the groups as well so yeah it's, yeah, it's good advice it's it's, it's you know it, it like a wedding starts at say 10 a.m and it finishes at 10 p.m the between prep and dancing so like everything in between that time is it's fair game. Oh, yeah, totally. And important to get. Yeah. And that's such a great shot. Do you, talking about groups, we don't talk about it often, but I still, you know, most of us do that as well. Do you still do groups for like all your weddings or do you, do you have some that don't have any, don't want any groups? So like you're talking about the big, big group shot. Well, just no, no, just I mean like any groups, like like any set groups, you know, like the bridesmaids, the grooms yeah. or anything. Yeah. It's unusual if they don't happen. Um, right. uh, and I actually don't mind them to be honest. It's it's fine. Um, I, I think actually that a lot of people who who come to me asking me for information about like you know the wedding day kind of think that I don't do those photographs. Funny enough, like but the opposite is actually the case. Everyone does them. So so look, I, I try to do the best I can. I I mean I, I I try to make a nice background. I try to pose them in a nice way. I I, I try to have a bit of fun doing them i mean i'm not always the most comfortable doing them so i sort of make noises and i have this <laughs> you make noises what, what noises shape i have a thing over the years that that like I, and if anyone who uh has had me as a wedding pho- photographer probably knows it, that i i when when i have the lineup done say like just say for instance the bridesmaids or it could be the bride's family or something like that and i step back and i'm happy with how they look and i i i start taking photographs but as i'm clicking i say photo 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 and I, I don't know why I do it. I mean, I don't know if it's nervousness on my behalf, like because I, you know, I, I, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm not an unconfident person, but I'm, I'm certainly not an extrovert. And uh, and people picked up on that, you know. And <laughs> you have people coming back to me later on in the night, uh, walking past me with their camera, going photo, photo, photo. <laughs> I like that. That's so that's funny. Do you, you're not saying photo like outside of the groups when you're just doing normal documentary stuff. You're not saying it then with each frame, are you? Oh Jesus Christ! No, you'd be. Um, do like I mean, you'd be fucking <laughs> certified, wouldn't you? Like you it all the time. It's just uh, no, it's, it's just during that uh, during the family photographs uh, time usually. Or if there's a if there's something set up, I guess I'm not the most comfortable person at setting people up. Mm. Uh, and even though I, I, I think it's an okay job, like it's uh, it's just that it probably helps settle my nerves, I guess, you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I understand that. I mean, same for me. My least favorite part of the day um, is the couple stuff. I don't know if you, you do you do couple stuff, you know, some of my couples don't want any, you know, like portraits a couple of time. Some of yeah. mine don't want any of that, but for probably like eight, probably 85% of the weddings, they still want some of that. And that's, that's the time where I get, the most kind of bit you know anxious or because you feel like it is a time where the photographer's supposed to take more charge you know and i, I just don't want to be doing that really yeah i totally feel for you there and, and i i i empathize with you i recognize everything you're saying as well i mean i find there's a couple of things here to say on this one i, I and, and like i've noticed over the years that like even though you go to some amazing places and uh, epic scenery and you do these epic shots and it's just, you know, those shoots are great. They're great fun to do. It's great to visit those locations, but you never see those images reemerge after a couple are married. It's always a fairly safe image. It isn't like a, their profile picture is fairly safe. And I kind of went over the years, I was like saying, um, I mean, it's, you know, it's a, what's the point in doing these images? Uh, if if they're not like uh, being held like in the lofty kind of heights that we all expect them to be held in, so what I do now is I tend to get a really good, safe, straight on look at the camera, use a reflector, you know, Stonewall classic portrait, uh, usually with the venue in the background, and that will do it for me. So. You know, you can have, we'll, we'll, like, I'll tell the story of the wedding all day long, but this is just one safe image that will probably uh, age better, like, I mean, than most of the other kind of things that you might do, you know, when you're out and they're, they're kissing too much and they're, you know, mm-hmm. running down an arm, some kind of cringy shit that's just not them. 
you know, it's more the direction of the photographer or the videographer on the day, you know. Well, that's so true. I think and it's probably controversial to say, but I think portraits are a lot, can really be a lot more about the photographer than they are about the couple, really. Yes, without a shadow of a doubt. And I also find that that people are way too polite uh, to refuse uh, any mm. request, you know, like, I mean, you might even have a situation where, like, I, you know, a bride might have particularly nice shoes, say, for instance, like, and I recognize that they're good shoes. And uh, I, so I will go to every extreme, every length to make sure that the bride doesn't walk on grass all day long because they're nice shoes. Mm. Uh, uh, but then you might get like, you know, a video guy go, uh, look, will you, I need a shot with you. Just walk across the grass there and walk back again. And she's there too polite to say no, you know, and it's like, oh God, you know, like uh, it's, so yeah, it does. It becomes about what they need and what they want. And often it's nice, the photographs that, that are that are captured and taken, but yeah, it, it, it's, I, I, I tend to play it safe and it's bloody safer than I'm getting actually rather than edgier. Well, it makes total sense, though. And I guess people who book us are probably not booking us anyway for those portraits. You know, I show hardly any portraits on my site and the couples that book us don't want that kind of stuff, I guess. Well, that's good. I mean, but I, I do think, though, that uh, if you didn't, like, I mean, offer it at all, like it would be, I got something in there, uh, that, uh, you know, it seems to be a deal breaker for some people that it's just that they want the safety net mm. of making sure that you just like for please the parents or please an aunt or make sure like I mean that's it but yeah I, I, I know it's it's funny and, and I even find like that when you're planning the wedding day with uh, with the couple like that you actually spend more time talking about the things that you can plan about the day and then it seems like it's all planned you know like but it's actually the opposite mm. of the case that is true. Do you, are you, you know, do you have much input on their kind of schedule and things? Or I mean, what's your way that you play it? Do you send out a big questionnaire? Do you always Zoom your couples beforehand? Do you meet them? How do you do it? Yeah, well, I think the, that the pre-meeting is like, uh, it's sort of one of the biggest parts of the process, really, because you get a chance to see them, you get a chance to build a rapport. Now, it's mainly on Zoom, I, I lad. Um, 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 but like, it's it's an opportunity to, uh, to you know, to to get that kind of side of things um, sorted, which is great. It's mm. I find that like, but uh, like, I, I let them, you know, I invite them to collaborate on the day, really, I guess, you know, and to give their input, or I'll ask them first how they see the day going and try and build it around that because let's face it, like every single wedding that you plan, uh, the plan goes out the window on the day of the wedding. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it it's just, it never plays out like that, but it, it's, gonna, it's good to know what was intended, I guess, really. You know? mm, no, that's true. Yeah, definitely, definitely is. But we don't need like a second by second breakdown, do we? I remember the one, I've only cancelled one wedding and that was because they'd booked me about two years in advance and then the bride emailed me at like 2 a.m. in the morning and gave me like a second by second breakdown of the procession when each bridesmaid was going to go. And I was like, wow, this is this is not the kind of couple that would be best for me, really. So, yeah, yeah. we don't need that kind of granular detail, don't we, do we? we don't well, no, but I, what I actually hate is when if you get like, for instance, like a member of the bridal party who has that view and they mm. have a forceful personality and they know their consumer rights, it's like, oh, Jesus Christ, it's going to be a long day, you know, like, and uh, it's, um, yeah. it's it, funny enough, it just, I, it, it, it rarely, rarely happens. I, I, I think that people who look at the imagery on my website and, and so on like that, like, I mean, know that their participation is not required. And they generally tend to be easygoing people uh, and they're generally happy to put their trust in experts all across their wedding day, you know. So uh, I, I, I very rarely come across uh, bridezillas or any of those kind of types. Yeah, same here. Same here. And as you say, and it's, and it's such a great point, it really comes down to what we're showing on our websites. We, you know, we don't show like these glorious, um, perfect princess type portraits or, you know, um, the, 
the phrase for a groom as well like and so people know that when they come into book for us that well, they're not going to be kind of like made to stand in window light and stuff and they can just enjoy the day and that's how that's how i always sell it on my zooms as well like you know i always say in my zooms that l- literally i want you guys just to not think about the photography on the day and just know that it's all you just you know just enjoy getting married and know that it's all being captured yeah i mean and the thing about is that like for me anyway 95 percent of wedding photography is like oh jesus christ you know it's <laughs> it's and i think that often say particularly on the groom side like that like you say wedding photography to them and ask them what they think and they'll think back over two weddings where they were a groomsman and the cringy shit they were made to do like i mean our you know the two hour photo session that they were only needed for three minutes on and so on like that like i mean wedding photography can conjure up uh, you know more negative uh, connotations in someone's mind i feel uh, which is again why they're probably drawn to the documentary side of things because they know like that well or at least they feel that their day will and hopefully will uh, just unfold naturally you know yeah that's so true that's so true cool man this is i'm really enjoying this this is so good um but let's change tack slightly um i think you've listened to a few episodes before so you might know what this little quiz is going to be about you do watch a bit of telly and movies don't you yeah a little bit yeah well not movies now not movies so much oh really more tv I just more yeah just it, I, I realized that I don't watch any movies anymore which is not good but not yeah. good but, well I'm looking down the ones I've got for you and there's only one movie and it's quite old so I think you might get it anyway but um if anyone's listening for the first time it's just a little game they're playing uh which is I enjoy it anyway don't know if the guests do but I hope you enjoy listening at home and it's I'm gonna say a, a movie or a series synopsis and we're gonna see if Shane can get it and hopefully you're enjoying uh, playing along at, at home as well. So, yes, Shane, you ready for your first one? Go for it. Okay, cool. So this is an old movie. It is old. It's probably ooh, 30 years old now, probably. Okay, anyway. So, a small-time Philadelphia boxer gets a supremely rare chance to fight the world heavyweight champion in a bout in which he strives to go the distance for his self-respect. Rocky. Yes, boom. Straight in there. Yes, cool. Yeah. It's a good film, isn't it, actually? I think it's good. I barely remember watching it, I have to say. Uh, but it is good. I remember um, Rocky IV, was it? That was the one where he was fighting Dolph Lundgren. With yes, him. Ivan yes. Drago. Yes, that one, yeah. Yeah, I remember that as well. I think that was, I went to the matinee to watch that, I think, as a kid. That, but that that was, like, quite harrowing. Because, um, if I know what, spoiler, but you know, like, Apollo Creed dies, doesn't he, at the beginning of that? Yeah, he does, yeah. Yeah, he does. It's been so long since I've seen that film. Actually, my kids are watching... The 1939, The Wizard of Oz at the moment. Oh, nice. That is a classic, isn't it? And I realise I've never seen it from start to finish myself. But uh, Really? Never? <laughs> it's they're, But they're absolutely loving it, you know. They uh, they started off kind of with the black and white, but they're like, oh, this is stupid. And then all of a sudden, then, like, there's a reason why this film is a classic. You know, uh, we're in, like, 2023. My kids are absolutely hooked on it, you know, and they're roped in, so. Oh, that's anyway. cool. Hey, so that's a good segue there. And it is quite magic how it goes in the black and white colour. I remember being quite scared the beginning bit, the whole black and white, the whole how she wants to put Toto down or whatnot is scary. I remember yeah, scary. and my kids are big dog lovers as well. And they were like, you know, yeah, they didn't like that bit. But the whole thing is scary. Jesus, God, I'm fucking hell. Like, I mean, the, the witch true. is probably the witchiest witch you'll ever see. Yes, that uh, sounds like that could be a song. The witchiest witch. The witch. <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen um, Wicked, the musical? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, it's so good. If you like Wizard of Oz, because it tells, it's a, you know, it's so good. Wicked is so good. And they're making it into a film, actually, in the next couple of years. It's brilliant. I really recommend that. Say. <laughs> but let's carry on with your quiz, uh, Shane. Um, so uh, one out of one so far, which is very, very good. Let's go for a second one, which is a series. Um, okay. And it's an old series, though, again. But, okay. So. Three priests try to work together and manage the parish on Craggy Island after the bishop banished them for their actions in the past. Ted! It is, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I've never seen a single episode, though. Okay, I'll just hang up on you right now. <laughs> is, it, is it one of your faves? Is it class? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it is. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how cult that show is, like, I mean, and, and still... To this day, like I mean, it's uh, it's it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So I've a, a, a funny enough. I, I remember photographing a wedding out in County Clare years ago, and uh, the groom was called Ted. Okay. And uh, 
he was a really, really nice guy. Just, you know, he was like this. He he had like just a larger than life personality and he was just great crack. And uh, I was telling him about another Ted that I knew from County Clare and uh, Father Ted. And he was like, what? OK. And I said, well, his house is not too far from here. Um, so he made me take him to Father Ted's house, <laughs> even though he'd never seen an episode of the show. He just uh, he knew that it was something that we had to do. So um, so oh, we drove to Father Ted's house, which was a. Uh, Took longer than they thought. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. I should watch an episode. I mean, it's had a lot of series, didn't it? It was. Yeah, uh, it had a lot. Yeah, I mean, look, I know it's yeah, you know, it's it's a particular kind of humor, I guess. Like it's very dark humor, uh, uh, but like uh, like they're still showing it on TV for Christ's sake. Like after all these years, so uh, um, maybe, maybe it's something you need to get into. Yeah, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I remember reading something recently about they were trying to do a Father Ted musical and the, the original writer was like axed from the musical or something. But Yeah, Graham, Graham Linehan, wasn't it? He was cancelled. Uh, 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 yes. I know, yeah. I, it's, a, it's kind of a sad story. There, You should look it up. Like, this is not the place for it. But uh, no. yeah, Darren Morgan as well was the main character and he passed away actually right at the height of all of it uh, mm. in the 90s. So I, I just, yeah. Um, another father Ted without Darren Morgan is just a no go for me. Mm. Ah, okay, well, okay, let's go on to your, let's go on to your third one. Uh, this one is a lot harder, and I do save the third one, the hardest one. So no, um, don't blame me if you don't get this one. Okay, so uh, this is a much more modern series. Okay, so a young chef from the fine dining world returns to Chicago to run his family's sandwich shop. Oh my God. And I tell you, this this show is the bear. And, oh, uh, you man, you get yeah, straight uh, in. <laughs> I just finished season two. Have you watched it? We're uh, halfway through the second season. Yeah, oh. but it's so good, isn't it? It is exquisite. It's brilliant. Love it. Absolutely love it. So we're we just finished uh, finished it last night. And, uh, uh, we watched two episodes last night, but I think just up to like the Christmas, like a Christmas party type episode. Good. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. That episode. Oh my God. Did you watch all of that? No, we were we were so tired. We didn't finish it actually. We we're about yeah. fifty minutes left. But. We had to. We had to like pause as well. Like, but the cast in that alone, for Christ's sake, we probably should say nothing just in case anyone here uh, listening hasn't seen it. But it, that is, it's a five out of five for me. Uh, yes. So, yeah. It is so good. It's so naturalistic, isn't it? The dialogue, the way they, it's so intense. So It's quite hard to watch at times. It's so intense the way they all speak over each other, like so often, but it's very cool. Yeah. And, and, but that, that's, I think that's central to it all. And, and it's, uh, it's probably, it's not easy to make that, uh, uh, from, from the actors. And I can, and, but like the whole show, even the first season of it were 30 minute long episodes and uh they were brilliant they were, but they were all tense yes <laughs> really tense to watch but that's part of it it's brilliant really yeah brilliant. oh it's cool you've watched it i'm glad yes so, so i really recommend that it's um apple tv if people haven't watched it yet. oh no it's not apple tv so it's disney plus isn't it i think it's on over here yeah disney plus yeah, i think they got it now yeah so yes. yeah. yeah so really good yes are you sorry are you watching anything else uh no we're not at the moment no what are you what are you watching anything else yeah, so I, I have. Have you seen? I think you might like this. Have you seen the other two? The other two? No, yeah. I've not heard of that. No. Like I think it's it's a uh, uh, it's basically it's a, it's it's like a, it's a funny, easy, very edgy kind of uh, show to watch. Like there are only about twenty minute long episodes. It's kind of like um, uh, it's like you remember Shit's Creek? Have you seen Shit's Creek? Yes, yes. Yeah. So all of that. That was fun. But if you like that, you'd like this. It's kind of, but it's a much edgier version of it basically it's about uh, um, a brother and sister living in the shadow of their Bieber-esque uh, younger brother you know and uh, um, and just kind of watching him navigate his way through fame and all the likes but it's very very funny so oh, that just, sounds good that sounds good is that Netflix or Disney what is that on? Uh, I think it's HBO so whatever that is Okay. Yeah, I don't know either. Oh, but I'll be able to get it. That's cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. Always like, always need a recommendation. There's so much good stuff out there, isn't there? So, oh, it's oh, awesome. so much good stuff. Just finished watching Dave as well. Have you seen Dave? Uh, Dave is that Dave? No, I don't think. No, well, no, no, not the Ricky Gervais thing, is it? No, no, no. no the, this is like a, the Jewish white rapper. Oh, no, uh, that sounds uh, good though. It's just absolutely hilarious, start to finish. You know, I mean, it's like yeah. So we I generally tend to watch like about an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, with Aoife my wife every night we set aside that time 
Kids have gone to bed. Zoom calls are done with clients. I've done a bit of editing in the evening time. And around about, say, 10, 15, 10, 30, we watch something for an hour. So we're, we're in limbo at the moment. We don't know what to watch. So uh, Oh, yeah, because you just finished the bear. Yeah. Just finished the bear. We watched a bit of the Wham documentary on Netflix, which is interesting, you know. But uh, so oh, yeah. after that now, so uh, I'm open to suggestions. Oh, yeah. So what did we watch? We, are we Have you watched um, The After Party, which is on Apple TV? No. That is fun. It's like comedy, but different genre as well. So it's a bit like, do you remember the old um, Clue film? Do you ever watch Clue? No. Where, where it's like a murderer and then it's all these guests in the house and you, it's like trying to guess who did the murder type okay, thing. Right. Yeah. But it's over a series. It's like a series. So in each episode has the story, the viewpoint from a different character. But each, it's also a different genre every episode. So one's like uh, animated, the one's like musical, the other one's like film noir. It's very clever. It's good. Right. Um, yeah. Notice. I'm going to yeah. watch that now. The after party. Putting it down as I speak. <laughs> cool, man. Well, I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. And well done. Three out of three. Super good. No prizes, I'm afraid. But uh, you get oh. the, the kudos. Kudos is very cool. Um, let's go back to your photography, Shane. And I wanted to ask you about one of your story awards, actually, as well. So I think it was the first story you won from us. It's so good. Um, as well as Honestly, each image features like moment after moment, which is just incredible. But I wanted to also ask you another specific thing about it, because it's also notable that each image is in a because it's quite different to what we get. Although every image can be uploaded at any ratio on, on TIR. You know, most people stick to the normal kind of three to ratio. But every image in this story is kind of like it's almost like a widescreen format ratio, isn't it? It's almost 16.9. What is it, you know? Yeah, actually, it's interesting you say that because I, I, I thought that portrait format wasn't allowed uh, on TIR because you'd never see one. No, you don't. It's very rare. There have been a few that have, yeah, yeah but it's, it's rare. It's like I just yeah. kept on following what everyone else was doing, you know. Uh, but um, I, six, I, I actually don't know what you're talking about, as in, like, I mean, I, I can't remember the wedding, but. Uh, oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. But, uh, it's all in black and white, anyway. And, and every image is like it's almost like a widescreen format that you've chosen i think yeah yeah and which is so cool i love that though and i just wanted to ask it's so effective for each train i, I just i just want to ask is it something which you you know do you deliver images in that kind of ratio to your clients or was it more of a thing that you did specifically for this kind of submission so i'll tell you exactly like uh, uh, what, what that was like so um, and it's interesting, you like the 16.9 because I, I kind of gave up on it. But okay, so um, if I'm editing a wedding and just say I shoot uh, 3,000 images at the wedding and I, I, like I do all my own uh, editing and calling and all that kind of stuff. So usually what I do is I, I, I use um, uh, what's a photo mechanic I'd normally use first and I go through it and I basically just pick out the images that are going to make the first cut effectively. Then I bring them into Lightroom and I, as I'm editing, going back through them, I, I, I start picking out my favorites out of all of those. So this is pretty much basically what I, where, where I'm getting to here. So like of say the 3000 images, I probably whittle that down to 1500 and of that 1500, I will probably select about 150, 200 that I would say best to find the narrative of the day, the best of the, of the story of the day. Mm -hmm. So I, I then I make them black and white and I crop them to 16.9 and I create a slideshow with those images. Ah, uh, cool, that makes sense. So, so what I've done there, like, so I, I, I output it as a, like a 4K slideshow and I, I, I put some music to it or whatever I can do. But I'd say what I did in that case was I, I just went through it again, uh, all the images I went, I wonder now, could I maybe make a, a this is reportage um, uh, award entry out of this selection of images? Uh, and I'd say that's what happened there. That I I I and I put them up and yeah. So and so, but it's so good as well. They're so effective in that ratio. You know, it's something I've never really tried in my own work. I think a lot of us, I think the majority of us, are so stuck to that three two ratio now even when i'm cropping images i stick to that ratio you know still and it gives you so much freedom to not have to i guess stick to that and yeah mm -hmm. i don't know but i didn't even think that was how you even it's so clever that you're doing it for a slideshow first do you deliver that a slideshow before they get the main gallery then yeah 
so yeah. it's, it's kind of it, it, it's always changing you know like that um, so the problem with 16.9 now is that like obviously it doesn't really fit on the various social media platforms like mm. 69 is actually the worst thing you can look at on a, on an iPhone if, if it's vertical because it's just like this little strip here and uh, yeah, it's not very Instagram friendly no unfortunately it's not and but and that's another story like but uh but but yeah it, it, it is it's nice it's kind of cinematic yes uh, it uh, is. And, um, and sometimes like even if you uh it'll put it with like um with, with a black line above and a black line below it it can be very effective you know and and it can look really really nice but it yeah it really only works if unless you turn your phone sideways or unless yeah. it's on a horizontal screen that's true and i guess um if they wanted to get prints uh that would be a bit difficult i guess you can you get prints widescreen prints yeah, yeah, well, you can i mean uh, of course you can but like it, uh, what i do is like what, what i actually just doing lately and this changes all the bloody time you know like where um you see if you're given uh, i find if you give a client 1500 images in the gallery like that it can be you know i i tend to just give them too much you know it's like here have it all if you're not blinking you can have it uh, if it has merit it's you can have it and you can decide what you like and you can decide what you don't like um, but what I've been doing lately is I uh, sort of say taking um, like those best 250 images and uh, I, I create a preview in the gallery so that if they ever go onto the gallery they're going to get like the a good synopsis of the day in those in the first few scrolls basically and uh, uh, yeah. and sometimes what I do is I, I give the client as well the, those black and white files so the, the 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 files that i use to make the slideshow uh actually people often ask for them they go yeah i bet they do them and no problem here throw them in on the gallery and and they, they you know they get them printed or do whatever they want yeah. that's really cool man it's great to hear about your workflow as well and how because we all do things so differently do we, don't we which is it's all good fun it's always good to hear about that but that honestly people listening now do head to uh this podcast episode on the i'll include the individual award that shane spoke about and that story walks so I, I think it's so good honestly it's so good and it's not just because it's in that format um just every image has just got a different kind of moment in it so yeah, man, so good. It's really Thanks. great. I, I, I still don't know what, what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, don't, I must look it up in, in a bit. But I, I might actually start playing again with, with 16.9 and uh, see how it goes. I'll throw a few in for the crack. Yeah, well, I think so. I think you've won maybe an, an individual award or two at 16.9 as well, I think. Not just a story, I think, from the top of my head, but... Anyway, all good. It's all good. All good. Um, let's go on to um, when, where we very briefly met, actually, which was at the very first Doc Day um, back in, it was 2020, wasn't it? It was just before, just before pandemic. Yeah, that's right, Jen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you enjoy that experience? You know, um, you were great, great talk. Were you nervous? You didn't seem nervous? <sighs> Uh, yeah, I'm fucking nervous now, for Christ's sake. Um, uh, no, you don't sound it at all. I, I look, you know yourself. Uh, like, I won't listen back to this podcast, put it that way, you know. <laughs> Will you really not? Will you? Oh, no way, no way. <laughs> no way. It's like, it's just, oh, you're uh, so good, man. It's great. It's, it's like, yeah, it, it's, it, I, I did enjoy it. I did, uh, and uh, I was delighted to be asked, you know, by Annie and Kevin to do it. Like, and, um, I, you know, I, I guess, like, I, 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 I just you want to impart or inspire to some degree, you know, impart knowledge, you know, uh, or, or be useful uh, to be when you're up there. And it's so, and uh, you know, you try to be different, but not too different, and you're trying to be true to yourself. And uh, so, so yeah, it, it was nice to do, and it was it was nice to be. It was nice when it's over. <laughs> oh yeah, I get that. I get that. Oh, but you were so good, man. So good. Um, <laughs> Did, was it some did you work on it like weeks in advance or was it like because do you know what i find it even i get nervous even when rehearsing to do a talk you know i'm literally nervous when i'm rehearsing i don't know about you the, yeah it's i know i uh, i don't rehearse uh, actually at all uh, <laughs> that's probably uh, the best way that's cool. uh, i don't uh, but like what happened there was um uh, like I've done a, a couple uh, of these before. I remember uh, uh, my um, great friend Jay Doherty um, oh, yeah. in, uh, in Donegal. He asked me to uh, to come and speak at Learning to Fly, and that's basically was I think that was the first one that I did. So I remember I had about a year to to prepare. So w what I was doing then, like in the evenings, I was sitting down. Like if I was editing a wedding, I I might uh, 
think of something that I could say and I'd make a cue card. And then like six months later, I had this like huge stack of cue cards and it was like, right, let's try and make something interesting out of this. And, uh, and I think that what happened then was I ended up tweaking it a little bit then. And, uh, and I, yeah. So, uh, like if you're speaking like summer next week, I'm sure you're going to just, you're hardly going to start from scratch, are you? No, I that guess that's true. That is true. It's like, you know, so, well, I mean, you maybe are, but like, I, I, it's like, well, how do you do it? Like, what's your, do you have any tips for me? Oh gosh, no, man. I don't know. <laughs> no, I never, I never know what I'm going to be doing until I always start like about a week beforehand and then just panic and, oh, I don't it's know. Like, would you stand up and like. Yeah, I do do. I do that. I do. Yeah. Did you not do that at all then? then? No. Well, you couldn't tell at all. You were so smooth. Thank you. Jesus. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I think that I remember seeing somewhere before like that um, the the key to people enjoying a presentation is the speaker enjoying themselves. That makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you're enjoying yourself, they're enjoying themselves. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. No, but, that's true. That's true, isn't it? And I do enjoy it once I start as well. I do enjoy it. Don't yeah. You? But, but that was great. That was a that was a, a great conference. I don't know how would you even describe it. Like it was brilliant. And it just it was enjoyable and great to see people. And of course, again, there this year, uh, I don't I don't think I got to talk to you this year now. But uh, no, I didn't see you this year at all. I would have I could I would have because I had my little microphone with me as well. Could I should have oh. interviewed you again. I would have invited you then. Uh, <laughs> 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 are, are you going again uh next year oh yeah ah, yeah it's it's nice it's a nice time of year it, it's just great to go and catch up with people and and uh and in fairness like watching that go from strength to strength the way that it is you know it's brilliant you know like i mean annie and kevin deserve uh, oh, so out of out of her. yeah totally it's magic what they've created there it really is it's awesome and yeah and on listening now i think um they've sold something like 75 percent already they sold like almost that much in the first week i think for next year so there are still uh, some tickets left now because they moved to a bigger venue so there are some more tickets available really do recommend uh booking in for next year it's a, a super lineup as well and it's just people are just so nice aren't they it's such a friendly warm atmosphere it's so cool yeah exactly and and just your uh i mean you'd even get like i suppose it's 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 geared towards photographers but you get a lot of videographers going too you know and it's uh and it's great because like uh, like i don't see many photographers i i see all videographers and uh, uh it's, it's like they're kind of my buddies in the industry more than anyone i guess because uh, yeah, that's true so it's nice to see them show up and, uh, and and hang out with them as well you know yeah. Oh, that is cool, isn't it? How it attracts so many videographers as well then. Yeah, kind of universal. That is true, isn't it? How we don't actually meet up with photographers when in our actual job. You know, we have to do that separately, but we do see videographers. Yeah, that is true. How many, of, how, what kind of percentage of your weddings have videographers, do you think? Uh, it's funny, about 50-50, I'd say. Um, wow, that's a lot, man. For me, it's only about 5% of my weddings have videographers. Really? Wow. Yeah. I'm, that's, I'm, my jaw is on the floor here. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder why that is is it i i just i don't know what that is actually i wonder why it is yeah yeah i mean there's different ways to analyze it, isn't there really uh like i i find people either get a videographer when they're getting a photographer or uh, a panic last minute purchase um mm. to throw them in like or maybe pressure from somebody who was saying oh i wish i had a video of my wedding and so on like that yeah and like, oh, i don't know i mean it's a uh, yeah, it, 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 but look, one second of video it gives away so much more than, you know, one single capture can, you know, you can... Really... Oh, don't say that to your prospective clients, though. He doesn't... <laughs> but it's true, like, they know, they know themselves, you know, like, yeah. it, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, look, I, I mean, I had video of my wedding, so, and I'm glad that I had it. Um, oh, that's cool. I could see why someone would not want one, I, 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 I could see why, you know, mm. uh, but... Yeah. 50-50 compared to 5%, that's crazy. It is very different, isn't it, actually? Yeah. Have you ever had, is everyone, all the videographers that you work with all been called? Cool? Have you ever had any nightmares? Uh, no, not really. Ah, look, you get the odd one or two, you know, you might get, like, you know, the odd newbie who just, you know, they don't, like, have the protocol about them and, yeah. you know, mm. protocol is a fucking horrible word to use, but, you know, <laughs> but you're, they're, like, they're just in their own zone and they're thinking of their own shot and that is absolutely fair. But I, I get on with everybody, all vendors, it's good. I love it when there's a videographer there that you can have 
if you're staying for dinner or for dancing particularly that you can have uh you know dinner with someone and have a chat and yes. and uh, so yeah you know it's good. No, it's true there are definitely pluses yeah and then like you the vast majority that i've worked with have been lovely i think i'm a nightmare for videographers because i shoot so close to the 25 mil you know for like 80 percent of the time and I, obviously i'm always aware of them i'm trying not to be in the shot but i'm also conscious that i need you know i want I, I need to get these shots that's why the couple have hired me but then there is that still part of me that doesn't shoot as freely as i would do if there wasn't a videographer because you're just trying not to be in their way do you know what i mean do you feel like that on the day yeah, you're very polite. I'm, I'm, I would be very, very like that as well. Like, I mean, there was, um, uh, like, even at the weekend, there was, uh, I was working with a lovely guy at the weekend. But I remember uh, during the ceremony that he set a, he put a tripod on, on, on like the aisle, and uh, I remember going, you know, something rather than trying to work around it or stay low. Uh, there was a balcony, so I just ran up to the balcony and got the shots from there. And actually, yeah, the yeah. shots turned out better than if I had a shot down low, you know. So, oh, that's cool. It worked out then. So, so yeah. it does. It, like it's, but I'm with you on that one. I know uh, for sure. If there's no videographer there. You don't have to. You can just totally shoot free. Um, but mm. uh, it's so. You are you that close to your? What did you say? Twenty five mil lens. Is that what you? Yeah, twenty five. Like like for eighty percent. So I shoot with a twenty five and eighty five. Uh, never change lenses, but the vast majority I shoot at a twenty five. Yeah. So um, Tony, what what uh, what kind of, what make is that? Like 25? oh, so, uh, Sony. So I was using twenty four mil when I was on the Canons, but it's like twenty five mil Batis on the Sony. Snap. Oh, yeah, all right, okay. Uh, and there's Batis. Are they the are they the autofocus ones? I started. It does autofocus, yes. Man, I wouldn't be able to do it manual focus. That'd be so bad. Yeah, but yeah. I, I know, like, I, I have one Zeiss lens here. It's, it's a 100mm macro. Oh, uh, cool. And it's beautiful. It's it's just like the nicest colour rendition of any lens I've ever had. But it's manual focus, so it's it's never getting used. But uh, mm. I do like Zeiss lenses, I have to say, though. And uh, um, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense now, yeah, actually. because So you just shoot with two all day long, yeah? Do you have like a... Like an old seventy two hundred in the bag, written for. I don't know, no. So I've got backup lenses in the bag, but I never use them. I literally, I've never actually taken these lenses off. I think that since having the two Sony's, yeah, I just shoot with those two lenses the whole day. Jesus, man. Well, okay, I, I, I funny, I, I was twenty four and eighty five for years, and just uh, about three years ago, I, I went from twenty four to twenty eight. Okay. And, uh, the difference is made. It's just it's my go-to lens for life now. But I went from eighty-five to fifty, uh, so I have this twenty-eight fifty combo now as well. And uh, yeah, I, I, I sometimes I miss the old eighty-five. I have to say, it just it, yeah. But I'm I'm tempted to, pl to play with a fifty to be honest. Um, so I'm never in love with eighty five stuff. I mean it it's practical and I can't, can't be so close. But I think maybe you know maybe I'm the opposite of you. I want to try go go to fifty. I think I don't know. Yeah, it's it's funny because like uh, when I start shooting a wedding, I find like that uh, there's two kinds of client and one like you can tell pretty quickly if this is going to be a twenty eight mil wedding or if this is going to be a fifty mil wedding. <laughs> Uh, and I prefer a 28. Um, uh, it's just my natural kind of go to, I guess. You know, 50 is not bad, don't get me wrong. Um, but like sometimes the, the problem with the 50 is that you have to get too close with it, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of, I'm still trying to properly figure it out, I guess. Like, I mean, I, I, I really like the 50 mil, but I don't want to absolutely love it, if that makes sense. But yet I'm not going back to 85. So. I think maybe it's all natural as well for people like us that have been doing it for quite a long time that we start to, I don't know, want to try different things or go back to something we used before. That's all natural, isn't it, in life, I think, as well. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, actually, Shane, because you have been in the industry, you know, quite a long time, um, which is awesome. Have you have you noticed much kind of change in the industry over, the, you know, from when you began to now? And do you have... Any, I don't know, tips or thoughts or advice that people have been in the in the for quite a while and maybe are a bit, I don't know, feel a bit stagnant or feel like they've hit a wall with their creativity or just where their career is at. I know that's a big question, but yeah. yeah well, I mean, like on that one, say, um, I, I mean, I I struggle with mirrorless, right? I can't just like, I mean, I have mirrorless cameras there, and uh, I I, um, but I just when you pick up the camera to your eyes and and, and like you have this EVF and it just trips me up. What I would love to do is I'd love to go on a wedding someday with somebody where I have no responsibilities and just play with that 
because the advantages of Meredith are unbelievable, you know, like that they're small, lightweight, nifty, the focus is bloody brilliant on them. And uh, so so maybe, you know, that that's something that someone could do. Like if you went on a wedding with somebody and had no responsibilities and just basically got to feck and play and make mistakes all day long and see the something work, like, I mean, that would, that would be... Uh, some little bit of advice there, I guess. I I, I might take that advice myself. But, uh, yeah. Do you do, ever do any second shooting? Um. No. No. <laughs> no. I get that. No. Do I? I don't either. Uh, not really. No. Uh, I don't actually. I. I. I I'm, I'm not opposed to it. I mean, usually, like if I have a Saturday off, uh, I try to keep that Saturday off, and that's probably the prime day to do a second shooting. So I'm like, I'm not working today. If I have a Saturday mm-hmm. off, uh, but um. But no, I, I'm not. I'm not um, opposed to it. I must actually reach out to some more friends and see are, are, would they mind if I tag them on for a day or so. Well, you sound like you're very busy though as well with your own weddings, and we do need a bit of a break as well. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm busy, but <laughs> like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm. I, I tend to procrastinate as well, so uh, we need to take that into consideration too. You know. So. <laughs> Mm-hmm. No, but I think that is really good advice, um, and it's something that could, you know, is, is very well. It should be pretty easy for people to arrange as well. Everyone's so friendly in our industry. So many people work with seconds all the time and want seconds. So it's something. Yeah, and, and and actually, like, yeah, need them, want them, have them all the time, and that's great. I mean, it's. Uh, but but if I can, if I can get away without a second shooter, like I mean, even if I if it meant me starting an hour earlier or something like that, because. Uh, I just, I'm bloody control freak. I'm on a stage. I keep the whole narrative to myself, you know, like, and, uh, but, you know, and maybe I should let that go too, because um, I, 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 uh, Aaron Daly is a, is a guy I work with quite a lot uh, when I need a second shooter and he's absolutely brilliant and he shows me other ways of doing things. Like, I mean, so maybe oh, that's I cool. stop my ways, you know. Yeah, learn from each other. That's true. But but I'm like you, Shane, I have to say, I, I've literally never, never, ever had a second shooter ever. Sure. So yeah i just i just something i just doesn't just something about it doesn't appeal to me and no i think i'm a i'm an okay kind of nice person i I get along with people it's not that side of it it's just i don't know i think i think honestly i have to say part of it for me is it's quite quite a big imposter syndrome and i feel like if i had someone else there at a wedding and they saw the way i work they'd be like what this guy doesn't have a clue what he's doing you know i think that is a, a fear factor for me about it to be honest yeah and it's very like frank even to say like that because it's not true you see your end uh, product and you know like that it doesn't matter whatever your process is to get there how it looks how it feels who cares your end, end product is brilliant so that, that's all that matters oh well, thank you it was kind. like that if you brought a second shooter to uh wedding often like i mean if i was working say with aaron like that he's covering groom prep or like he's taken a completely different tack in the church. We're never together all day long. Like, I mean, we're, we're crisscrossing all the time, but we're never ever quite together. But uh, uh, like you could, you could imagine like if maybe you were doing a bride prep in a small house and there was two of you there and it's like, oh, Jesus God, he's in the back of every photograph that, you know. Yeah, uh, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they could have tormented me, you know. Like a... No, I had that once with a videographer during a couple time bit that they were, always just behind the couple you know it's just so random like they were just in every shot so i do have a little my little prima donna thing now if there's a videographer is that i do ask for the couple time stuff i do just ask the couple if it can just be us without the videographer there and they have a separate session yeah uh, i know that's a bit prima donna but it's just because i had such a bad experience that one time so. yeah jesus god i know I, I i wouldn't have the balls now to ask for for that <laughs> uh it's like yeah and actually i find what i do a lot more now as well is you know, get a videographer who adds a vision themselves, like, you know, like, uh, and, and let them do their setups and see if there's anything that you can nick off them, you know, like, uh, that is true. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, so, like it's, you can, you're going to usually have a 10 minute gap to, to try and, you know, gather as much imagery as possible in those, uh, with those couple of shoots as possible. So like, uh, yeah, kind of put the onus and pressure back on them a little bit, I guess, you know, and it often works out okay, you know, so. Yes, no, that is true. That's so true. Yeah. I've definitely piggybacked on the time when the videographer's taken the couple away, like at a distance. But yeah, so that probably is a bit uh, hypocritical uh, of me, to be honest. At least the, like, there's some videographers I work with and they're brilliant at it. Like, I mean, it's just because I'm like you, I, I'm not the greatest at posing people. I probably, I'm probably overthinking it or I, I, I 
I'm sometimes not the best at reading body language. I'm looking at them and I'm saying, oh God, they're not enjoying this. Mm. Where you look at the photographs afterwards and they're having a great time. Like, what am I projecting internally here in that situation that makes me think they're not having a good time? And often a videographer who just comes in and just uh, will take over in that situation and it just makes it so much easier for me and, and for us. Yeah, totally feel that. Yeah, totally get that. Um, Shane, just look down. We're like an hour and 10 minutes already. It's literally flowing, though. It has. I've so enjoyed talking to you, man. You're so Super. good. It's so, no, oh, it's just so lovely talking to you. It really is. It really hey, you is. Too. Thanks, man. Um, so got t- can we, can we, have you still got time for, to, for one more question? Go for it. Work away. Cheers. Okay, let's do it. Uh, let's do a big one. I, I ask it semi often, but I think it's something that we all just want to hear from. And I think people would especially love to hear it from you. So, yeah, do you have any advice or top tips to help someone become better, you know, specifically at the documentary side of what we do? So, yeah, any thoughts, advice, just um, specifically about the documentary side? Just set nothing up. Simple. Yeah. I mean, just. Uh, uh, you know, I, I guess like that, um, uh, look, I mean, just to, I can only describe what I do and hopefully uh, someone can learn That's from this. perfect, yeah. I try to be, uh, you know, a, 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 a good presence on on the day, on the day of a wedding. I, I you know, I, I like to show up like a guest and be like a guest and let the day unfold as it unfolds, but I'm there um, and, and like just anything that's happening, uh, I, I just set nothing up. That's it. Like it's all captured, gathered. Sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's not so obvious. But uh, just yeah, just set nothing up. If you're setting nothing up, then it's a documentary photograph. So simple as that. Yeah, well, that's so true, though, isn't it? It is so true, and that's why the couples book you. They don't want to be like moved along into like better light, or you know, telling the makeup artist, or can you put the lipstick on again? That's not why they booked us. They don't want us to interfere. So yeah, yes, but yeah, you have you've got to be a presence. You know, you can't. I well, I couldn't picture myself showing up and just you know hiding behind a bush or not interacting or mm. anything like that like it, it, it a lot of it is just kind of you're like waiting for something to happen i guess but something will always happen that's the thing yes that's true yeah what are you like by the way on the day do you you know are you are you quiet or do you start conversations with people around you how are you yeah i, I i'm I'm it's fr- probably a little bit of an alter ego, if anything, like where you're uh, a bit more confident than you would be in normal life or not even like confident, but like I'd probably be a bit more reserved in, in my uh, in my normal uh, day to day life. But I'm definitely active like uh, um, I, I the, the kind of the, what am I trying to say here now? I love it when I get an email from a client before they've seen any photographs saying, you were great on the day and we loved having you and and that's like the success of it all for me like i mean like uh, um if they're happy with what i did without seeing a photograph then like that's where i want to be that's that's what i'm aiming to be and that's where you'd be at i guess so uh, I don't even know if I'm answering your question there. You are. No, you are. And it just comes from being a lovely person, though, as well. I mean, it's so, so much you are. And it's such an Im- important side of what we do is just being with people. And just by being nice, you make people feel at ease. And then you can get this the intimate, natural captures as well. So it's like, a- yeah, you know, and, and I get it. Like, and I hear anecdotally some stories about, like, uh, you know, other, you know, photographers and videographers and anyone even, like, who come along and they have a different way of doing things and a lot of that though is maybe they feel pressure to deliver certain types of images and mm-hmm. you know it, it can be difficult to disguise that pressure you know uh, and they don't like they're probably unaware that they're doing it but i would be quite self-aware in that regard like that i i i just want people to have uh, a good day if they're having a good time then i just hoover up all that and that comes across in the images and uh, you know it makes it easier for me and for them yeah no, all perfect, man. I love that. If they're having a good time, you just hoover up all the images. It's perfect. It is. It's so cool. It's cool. Oh, dude, honestly, thank you so much for talking to me today. I really, really enjoyed talking to you, man. It's, just, it's a shame we've not spoken that much in real life. It was only very briefly at Doc Day. So I'm looking forward to seeing you again in... Is yeah. it, God, I should know the date of it. I should know the date off the top of my heart. But it's next year. It's like February... I think so. Yeah. <laughs> if Kevin uh, yeah. and Annie are listening to this now, they're like, "Oh, Al, you should know this." But yeah, yeah I know. But, listen, I know. You, you listen. You, you're fantastic now. Uh, great to talk to you. 
keep up the good work. I don't know how the hell you do it. I mean, like, uh, you know, I have a few weddings in the backlog here and I'm panicking over it. And here's you, you know, fucking running mini empires. And <laughs> you know, oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate so that. It's brilliant. So just keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being such a big part of it and, and talking to me today. It's awesome. I'm looking forward to people listening to you. Um, yes. So, Matt, so I um, all the best for your weddings ahead. Um, and I will see you at Doc Day next year. Thanks again for today. Thanks, Adam. All the best. Bye bye. Bye bye. You've been listening to the 133rd episode of the This Is Repertage podcast. Shane was such a pleasure to chat to. Hope you enjoyed listening. Head to thisisrepertage.com for a link through to his website to see the brilliant Repertage Award he spoke about and also one of his story awards that's all in 16.9 format, which is just brilliant as well. We now have 133 episodes of the podcast available where we speak to wedding and family photographers from all over the world. If you like this episode, delve into our back catalogue for lots more. If you're not a member of this Repertage or this Repertage family, check out all the benefits of joining us including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 individual award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, such as our upcoming Christmas party in London on the December 11th, 2023. Remember that you must RSVP if you want to come along to that. Exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers and much more too. At the time of this episode going out, there's just a few days left to submit to our next awards round. The deadline is the same for both sites. Submit by 2359 BST on the 23rd of September 2023. No poses, nothing staged. This is Repertage. And this is bye for now. (laughs) 